Lucrecia Borgia and her bad reputation. Does she deserve it? Lucrecia Borgia is famous for holding extravagant parties, poisoning attendees and being an adulterer, committing incest with her brother. The family had control of Renaissance Rome and a tight grip on the people through their depraved acts of cruelty and immorality. They are the original crime family, with Lucrecia as the top female of the depraved circle, potentially used as a pawn by her father and brother in their scheming games against the people of Renaissance Rome. Lucrecia Borgia was born in 1480 to Vanessa de Catane, a mistress of her father, Cardinal Rodrigo Borgia. Her future was determined to be remarkable from birth, as confirmed by an astrologer that her father organised. The Borgias originally came from Spain and they were targets of suspicion and rumour due to being outcasts and outsiders by the Italian nobles and they would be vilified for centuries to come. Her father Rodrigo became Pope Alexander VI and later became one of the most controversial bishops of Rome due to scandalous affairs with multiple mistresses and illegitimate children. Popes were not allowed to marry, but they could be sexually active, although this was a controversial act for God's representatives on earth. Lucrezia Borgia's father was unique. He acknowledged the children he fathered by several different women, and he provided for them, as well as taking a great interest in their education and development. Lucrezia was brought up alongside her cousin, Adriana Orsini, it was in this household that she received a brilliant education of languages, music and poetry. She was taught multiple languages, Latin, Greek, Italian and French, as well as enjoying dancing. She was rubbing shoulders with the highest people in society and her father left her in charge of his political affairs when he was absent, much to the disgust of the clergy, who was concerned that an illegitimate woman would be in charge of the Pope's affairs. She was able to influence her father, unlike most others who had tried and failed, so she was a precious pawn to some. Her beautiful golden hair and face, her intelligence and political influence in society allowed her to aid her father to secure alliances after his accession. When it was rumoured that she would marry, many Italian noble families were interested and she was betrothed to many that her father forged and broke off until her first marriage was cemented at the age of 13. Purely politically motivated, her father set her up with Lord of Pissarro and nephew of the Duke of Milan in order to gain an ally in northern Italy. He chose Giovanni, who was 13 years her senior at the age of 26. They married in 1493 and it was celebrated profusely with an extravagant party that went long into the night. This wedding festivities started to get the locals talking, for all of the wrong reasons. They were rumoured for attending the sordid banquet of the Chestnuts, an infamous orgy that the Borgias supposedly attended, despite there being no evidence as such. Lucrecia was used to lavishness and privilege of her life in the Vatican, so she struggled to settle into a more modest lifestyle in Pissarro with her new husband. Her father had used her as a pawn to improve his relationship with Milan, but the importance of this relationship started to waver, making his daughter's husband Giovanni surplus to requirements. It was this motivation that is why her father allegedly plotted to kill him, but he was deterred by his daughter not to. Instead, he chose to annul their marriage and claimed that Giovanni was impotent and that the marriage had not been consummated, much to the embarrassment of the Duke. This was untrue because his first wife had died in childbirth, proving that he was not impotent. He wanted to find another man who could provide a more beneficial alliance. They were yet again the talk of the town for all of the wrong reasons. Lucrezia's virginity was now questioned by the public due to her annulment with Giovanni and very few believed that the marriage was not consummated. This thrusted her sex life into the minds of others and it never really went away after this. 
it became a topic of gossip for years to come. And in retaliation for the embarrassing and untrue allegations of impotency for Giovanni, he claimed that his annulled wife was having an ancestral relationship with her brother and father. And this allegation would blacken the Borshaw family name for generations. Lucrezia was sent to a convent while the negotiations took place and the family's enemies suggested that her father was hiding her away due to a secret pregnancy, despite him pleading that she was a virgin. The annulment was finally agreed to by Giovanni, perhaps because he was permitted to keep her dowry. But a baby boy was born and it was rumoured that this was the secret son of Lucrezia. His parentage was unclear and her father issued two official orders that the boy named Giovanni was a son of Caesar, Lucrezia's eldest brother. He then issued another order that said that the child was his. The public still believed the child was Lucrezia's, but the official orders led them to believe that he was born from an incestuous relationship with her brother or father. In July 1498, Lucrezia was married for the second time to Alfonso, Duke of Persigli, and the illegitimate son of the King of Naples. Italy at the time was not a unified nation. It was divided into city-states that were ruled by noble families. Despite this matching being purely politically motivated, she did find love with this duke, and they were very happy during their brief marriage. She even turned her back on her father briefly during a disagreement regarding the legality of the marriage of Alfonso's cousin Beatrice, Queen of Hungary. The newly married pair had a son only a year later in 1499. They named him Rodrigo after his grandfather. His father was due to change his mind to benefit his political movement across the country yet again and the new duke had become unuseful due to a better alliance with France developing. Fearing for his life, Alfonso fled to Rome, a suspicion grew that his father-in-law wanted him dead. But in 1500, during the summer, he was attacked on the steps of St Peter's Basilia, and he suffered severe wounds, despite having guards present to protect him. Lucrezia nursed her husband's wounds, but the perpetrator was unknown, as he had other enemies that were after him as well. But the most likely perpetrator was Lucrezia's big brother, Caesar. He was getting better, despite the deranged attack, but he was later strangled to death by one of Caesar's servants. At only 20 years old, Lucrezia was devastated by the loss of her husband and entered an extended period of mourning. It was these types of violent crimes against those in their close inner circle that led to their fearful reputation as a family. Lucrezia was widowed and devastated. She was a widowed mother of one, and she was set to yet again become a pawn in her father's political lifestyle. Lucrezia had perhaps given up on the happy ending of a love marriage, and so it is alleged that she turned into the ultimate pawn of her father and became a poisoner of the enemies of her family. Poisoning was a popular method of murder in Renaissance Europe, as it was the most inconspicuous and hardest to prove the perpetrator. Further scandalous rumours began to spread that she had a toxic ring that could store toxic substances and enemies started to disappear without explanation. Lucrezia's scandalous reputation motivated her to arrange her own match, a match that would rid her of the rumours of being an incestuous poisoner. This was made a hard task when the locals heard of the grisly end to her second husband. They were understandably fearful, and so her dowry was increased to 100,000 ducats. This match would mean giving up her son Rodrigo to other family members, so that the new couple could start their family from scratch. So the young son was cast aside to allow her to marry Alfonso d'Est, heir to the dukedom of Ferrara, in December 1501. In 1503, her father Pope Alexander died, freeing her of his wicked games and messy political environment. This was another match that, although originally politically motivated, did lead to love, and it was alleged to be her happiest marriage. Lucrezia gave birth to eight children, with four surviving to adulthood. She was well-liked and respected by the court as a duchess. The rumours slowed, 
and scandals were becoming a distant memory. In 1512, the son she was forced to give up died at the age of 12, and she had not seen him for many years. She was struck down with such strong grief that she hid away in a convent before returning to live a more withdrawn life. Lucrezia died at the age of 39 in 1519 during a particularly hard birth of her last child. She was mourned greatly by the people of Ferrara, but she had ensured that the Borshal line would live on in her descendants, in both the clergy and in nobility. The complete truth about Lucrezia Borgia will never be known, but it seems clear that she was more of a pawn in the hands of her powerful family than she was ever a malicious schemer and murderer. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.